people seem to react to the the imagery itself and not so much about what I write about it or speak about it. So that's something that, you know, will just change over time as well, I guess. And yeah, I try not to let any of those real world things get in the way of uh, making the kind of art that I like to Well, I, I work with glass primarily. I was initially a graphic designer and wanted to work with layering within glass. Um, so the sort of work I do in Photoshop, I now do within glass and I work mostly with text and images in glass. Yeah, there's lots of different sides to being an artist. It's not just making the art. Um, and that's one of the things I've found quite difficult is that there's just so many facets that you've got to get a handle on. Um, yeah, whereas in a nine to five job, there's other people that do that. There's people that answer the phones and do your marketing and all that side. Um, but when you're an artist working for yourself, you're it. Okay, uh, yeah, this is my folio. And these are the Australian of the Year Awards, um, which is a bit of an old photo <laughs> with John Howard. And that's the awards. That's the sort of size that they are. That's got different type inside uh, and it's the same colour that they are as well. And I make those each year um, and it's been wonderful. I've been able to go up and meet um, quite a lot of the recipients and so that, that's been the, the biggest honour that I've had. Uh, and also working for the Queen of Jordan and Probably my most treasured thing that I've got is two Christmas cards that I've received from the Royal Court of Jordan. So that's, that's been really exciting. When I was younger, I mainly wanted to be a fashion photographer, which is where my love for fashion started. I started researching different places that did fashion photography, and I think I found more of a passion for the garments and the fashion in there rather than the actual photography itself. If I've got something that I want to do and um, inspired to do, I'm not forced to do it, I'll sit there for hours. Um, there was one piece that was all hand beaded and that took days and days to get done but in the end I knew it, it was something that I wanted to do and I could kind of picture the end outcome so I think with that one there, like I said, days and days, I have no limits. In order to pursue a career as a designer you really have to be dedicated to it and I think going into a career like that you have to know that it will consume a lot of your life, so you're gonna to have to encapsulate it into all elements of your life and really love what you do and have a passion for it. Um, I'd probably like to start working for a big company that's already established. Um, maybe work my way up to be an assistant designer or something like that and um, gain enough experience in order to open up my own label. graphic design. We're a multidisciplinary design studio so um, we also do like 3D installations as well as um, graphic design work. We ended up working at a graphic design studio and it kind of just stemmed off that. <laughs> we got so attached to the project so afterwards we just relieved it. It's over. <laughs> <They're> over. <laughs> um, um, but we're pretty happy with some of the paper installations that we've been doing lately. Um, the one at Finders Keepers, so we decorated the stage area. Um, that was a big mission, and also we just did the A4 Paper Festival um, and did a window installation for the Sydney Morning Herald. Um, so that was a pretty big achievement for us <laughs> to pull that one off, just the two of us. 
Um, no, we would start with paper, we would start with hands on, um, just brainstorming, sketching, um, looking at heaps of books online as well, um, just getting inspired first. And usually, yeah, we have a really good brainstorming session, get some ideas down, and then we start developing like on the computer or <laughs> sketching it up. I think we've definitely grown um, in the 18 months of having this business. Um, we've matured. <laughs> um, have we? <laughs> yeah, we have. Um, but we've also learnt to just also have fun while doing it. I think that's really important. We've just learnt a lot from um, a lot of people along the way as well in dealing with um, clients. Um, even collaborating on projects with other artists and designers as well. So there's always something to be learnt from someone. So. I never really did much art uh, growing up, or not like formal uh, like art at school or anything like that. I didn't really like it, but. Um, like uh, drawing a lot, I guess. Um, and in my early 20s, I was at university not studying anything creative. And then I got into just doing photography and street art and things like that. And then I started to be involved in more exhibitions, and that's when I started taking the drawing more seriously. It's just a strange part of. Uh, the world to be in because all the great parts about making creative stuff and my my job is to come up with great you know ideas to communicate them to other people and share these kind of creations but that also means I have to be part of a commercial world as well to make it realistic you know I've met some really really amazing people that have will be my friends for the rest of my life including artists but also people that I've met purely through buying my work and um, interacting that way. But I've also met some of the most evil people I've ever heard of that work in, in the art world. And it's, it's really depressing and it doesn't make you want to create work when you think that that's the end point of it. I don't really aspire to decorate people's homes, but there are good parts of that as well. You just don't want to ever feel like you're just making product for a commercial world, I guess. But there are, oh, there's, there's more good parts than bad parts. That's my summary. I love going to other places, but I do really miss Melbourne when I'm not here and I'm really happy to be working here. Because Melbourne, as far as glass goes, Melbourne's a very, very tiny community. Um, but in the arts in general, it's a fabulous city and there's just always so much going on and the galleries always have huge exhibitions that are inspiring. It's such a hub for design and the creatives here are a lot more kind of tight-knit and everyone knows each other or knows of each other. I think as a city we're a little bit more open-minded to things and also that art scene so that's why I think people do come here and also it's the architecture. It is always kind of trying to keep up with what's happening around the world. And there's a really good sort of subculture as well here. I think it's going to keep going quite underground, produce some interesting works. There's a lot of there's a lot of graffiti art, and there seems to be a real revival in the handmade. So I think Melbourne's sort of leading the way in that. You're looking for something interesting, something a, bit, a little bit different, and that's what I think Melbourne can provide. Yeah, find someone that believes in you, uh, whether it's a partner or a parent or a friend who can see that you love doing what you do and just get them to constantly <laughs> encourage you because <laughs> you'll get a lot of people saying oh you can't do that or you know don't be an artist you won't make any money but at the end of the day you know it's about what's in your heart and keep going